Hi everyone, welcome to another edition of a Kerkulab video. This time we are talking about a very charming genus of orchids. I am referring to the genus Vanda. Not all Vandas. This time we are talking about our experience with growing the big large Vandas. Many channels from different parts of the world have joined up, showing how highly appreciated the large Vandas are. The names of the participating channels are now going across the screen, but I will also mention them and their links in my description so that you can easily access them. Right, <laughs> not all Vandas grow to very large plants. Some species are naturally smaller. And these days we can also get small compact hybrids that were obtained with crossings with miniature orchids of other genera. Those foundations are very interesting, they are very beautiful, and they are also space-saving. But that is not what we are dealing with today. Today we are talking about the fascinating and attractive large vandas. So very much appreciated for their long roots hanging and the large stunning blooms. When the species natural habitat is in the east side of the world. They are widespread from tropical Southeast Asia to Australia. Cultivated species are easily available to purchase, but most of the large vandas we can find in the market are hybrids. Mine are hybrids mainly. I have six large vandas. Better said, four of them are large already and they are blooming size. The remaining two will get big in time, but for the moment they are still juvenile. During winter and early spring, they live indoors. But uh, if days are nice and sunny, I take them out to water and enjoy the breeze uh, during the time. This is a south-facing window and uh, they were exposed to full sun all through winter because uh, the tree outside had no leaves. I could do that because these windows have uh, double glass panes and uh, they reduce the heat of the sun. Now that the magnolia tree outside grew back its leaves, these vandas are more shaded, which is a good thing as the sun is getting stronger. These are the two vanda juveniles. I have them for three years at least. I got them as seedlings maybe one year out of the flask. That's four years in total and they are only this small. <laughs> They have been growing steadily and I can see they are getting stronger. But there is uh, still a long way before they can bloom. Maybe another four years. I'll put a card in the link for the videos I made about growing them as seedlings, in case you care to watch. At the moment they are growing in these pots with a few chunks of charcoal and some pieces of lava rock to hold the roots in place, avoiding the mechanical damage when I water. I water them in the same way I water the mature ones, that is, uh, soaking them every day during summer and on most days during winter. All these uh, vandas need uh, watering, so I'm taking them outdoors now so that we can talk a bit more about them and about the way I care for them. Here we are, we can see them better now. They all came with uh, hanging roots when I got them, uh, which I like, but uh, all but one decided to grow new root systems after I bought them. Maybe it was a change of environment and uh, water regime. That is why I decided to place them into baskets, which anyway is a lot more convenient and comfortable to grow in a home during winter. This is the smaller of the four mature ones, but it grew rapidly, never stopped growing during winter. It blooms with pink large blooms. All these roots are new. It came with a moderate sized number of hanging roots, enough to fit into this basket. However, she soon discarded the older roots and produced new ones. All these roots are new, as I said. Inside the basket, there are a few pieces of lava rock and some coconut fiber in mesh. That's um, the way all them are. 
the other ones have the same medium in their baskets. Just enough to keep the moisture for longer and still keep the roots airy as they like it. I don't understand why, but my vendors prefer to grow the roots upwards, which makes it very inconvenient when it comes to water. This one is a good example of that. It grew a beautiful new root system after it gradually lost the hanging ones. Only this time, all the new roots decided to grow upwards. Very few roots in the basket. So, two years ago, I decided to um, bring them down to make them grow in the basket. It was easy to do. Uh, after watering, the roots became very malleable and um, none of them broke. However, the orchid objected strongly. It lost the beautiful green tips and uh, last year there weren't hardly any roots growing. Still, the orchid bloomed twice a year. Last blooming was December. As a consequence, it also started losing leaves at the base. So, I thought I might as well replace the roots back up, which I did about four weeks ago, hoping the orchid picks up and grows new roots. The roots were again very easy to bend up, and only one was not possible to replace back up. I also decided to place a small patch of moist sphagnum moss around one of the roots, and another one on the leafless stem, hoping to make roots grow. I saw this strategy in a Brazilian channel and it seems to work very well. There are two options apparently, one keeping the sphagnum moss moistened with plain water or as an alternative with the rooting hormones, like for instance seaweed extract. For the moment I am being very careful and I'm keeping the sphagnum moss fairly dry till days get warmer, especially the one uh, patch of the sphagnum moss on the stem. I don't want the stem to rot. Another vanda, and more of the same. <laughs> Can you see how the new roots are growing upwards? These roots are amazing, so thick and yet so flexible. The hanging roots she had when I bought it three years ago were very thin. She lost them and she took quite a while to grow these new ones, which is no wonder considering how thick they are. The leaves showed some wrinkling from the very beginning. So I'm not sure if it is a trait or if it is dehydration. Anyway, I did not lose these ones at the base, which even look more wrinkled. However, it lost uh, three leaves in the middle of the stem, uh, where there are the remainings of older spikes. Luckily, there is one root trying to uh, grow here. If so, others may grow in this area, which is great uh, to fill in this gap, and at the same time being a safeguard in case I want to split the plant for a question of size uh, or other reason in the future. There are signs of old spikes all over the plant, but um, ever since I bought it three years ago, it attempted to bloom several times, but the spikes always aborted, except for now. She has a spike now, and I hope it blooms this time. In fact, there was a second uh, spike which aborted, but this time <laughs> I believe it was only my fault. I noticed happy sap on it but I was careless uh, not to wipe it immediately, and then I forgot. And as the sun hit the spike when I placed it outdoors, it may have been the cause for its collapse. So I'm praying that this spike here will produce some flowers this year. It would be awesome and long wished for. This is my very favorite Vanda, because of the golden color of the blooms and the compact looking of the structures. I got it as a birthday present uh, three years ago in winter in January. Over time it has also lost some of the existing hanging roots, but not all of them. They have been replaced by new ones that are thicker. They, they look so lovely hanging, I left them be. All these thick ones grew under my care. 
But again, there are several new roots growing upwards. <laughs> this is the remainings of one of the spikes, and the other one is still showing its beauty. The blooms are smaller than the other vandas here, but uh, there are more blooms and um, they are more compact looking. Another thing, there are four keikis around the, the base of this vanda, which is wonderful, making the plant bushier and even more compact looking. I love it. I find the care of vanda hybrids quite easy which doesn't mean I don't make mistakes or have made mistakes from time to time because each plant has its own personality and very frequently what is good for one is not good for the other. As I get to know my plants, I get to make less mistakes. So knowing our plants is the key. One of the major problems I see with cultivating vandas is uh, the drop of basil leaves. There may be several reasons, one of which is sudden drop in temperature or dehydration due to root loss, as they do not have pseudobulbs or other storage organs. In general, vandas need plenty of high light, and I give mine as much direct sun as I can, early morning and late afternoon too. I do not keep them in direct sun at midday, of course. One thing to have in consideration is that some vandas are more tolerant to direct sun than others. I water them every day during summer and on most days during winter, unless it is too dull for several days on a row or uh, if it is too cool. I water them by soaking the roots in a large bucket letting them drink from 15 minutes to several hours, depending on uh, hydration needs, weather related. I fertilize consistently at 300 parts per million, meaning in every watering. I flush frequently. It can be once a week or every other week, depending on my time availability. Vandas do very well in warm climates, as they are warm lovers. That does not mean it has to be hot for them to be happy. My summers are relatively cool. It hardly ever goes above 30 Celsius, and most of the time temperatures are between 22 and 25 Celsius. This winter, my temperature indoors has been around 16 Celsius, which seems to be the minimum to get them growing through winter, as long as they get plenty of light. However, in previous winters, when it was cold with less sunny days, temperatures inside the house dropped to 14 Celsius. And they still did well. I just kept them drier. And um, green root tips may have stopped they restarted when temperatures and the day length increased. I like to grow my large vandas bare root or close to bare root, but they can also be grown in pots as long as the medium is very airy and very fast draining. This is where my vandas grow during the summer, either here or under the smaller porch. In either case, they get afternoon sun. For morning sun, I hang them in um, other places of the garden, one of them being uh, the peach tree, uh, which will grow leaves very soon. Uh, that means I move my vendors uh, a lot, uh, trying to give them as much sun and uh, highlight as I can. They are now dripping as I have just watered them. These two juveniles here are also hanging uh, when the summer comes and they are placed together with the larger ones. Now, they have also just had a good dunk. This is the way I grow my vandas. I hope my experiences here mentioned are of some use. Although it is easier to grow them indoors in terms of watering mostly, and they also like it better, it is very much possible to grow them indoors all year round as very attractive houseplants they are. They are very adaptable orchids. I don't find them fussy at all once we get to understand them. 
Should you need further information on how I grow my fundus, please let me know in the comments. And before I go, I recommend that you visit at least some of the channels in the long list mentioned in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I really am so grateful for your time. Keep well and safe and I'll see you soon in my next video.